okay. This is what I meant that the transitions aren't great. But hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we are currently live on Twitch. We're live also. Twitter has a little video thing, YouTube and LinkedIn. So thanks, y'all, for joining in. Um, I'm joined by Natri right now to talk about the GitHub Accelerator, which is a great opportunity for maintainers to be able to start their careers in open source. Um, and we just did this in, on Twitter Spaces, but I hate to ask you again. Could you introduce yourself, say who you are, and like why you're passionate about this program? Yeah, definitely. So um, hi, everyone. I'm May 3. It's Nay and then 3 like the number for the folks wondering about pronunciation. Um, I, joined Glitter I joined GitHub uh, back in 2018. Um, I joined as the chief of staff to the CEO at the time, Nat Friedman. Um, <laughs> Rizal's like, I've been saying your name wrong. It's okay. Anything goes. Uh, Nay 3 is just an easy way to explain it. Um, but yeah, I joined back in 2018. And I was the chief of staff, um, was part of the GitHub leadership team. It was a wild, you know, four years. And in the last couple of months or past year, I've been really focused on something we at GitHub call the open source economy. So really building programs that help open source not just survive, not just kind of be sustained, but really thrive over the long term. And, you know, GitHub has had a ton of different feedback across the years for maintainers on how they deal with burnout, how they um, are building careers in open source, how do they work on projects, not just on nights and weekends, um, but full time. Like it's really their, their main project, not the side project. Um, and so I've been really focused on what can we do in a programmatic way. So we launched many products in the recent past. So we launched GitHub Sponsors back in 2019. Um, and that was really about opening up a way for developers to receive funding on GitHub. And now, as we've looked over the last couple of years, we started you know, with individuals, we've gotten enterprises onto the platform. So they're sponsoring developers and open source projects. Um, and now what we're really seeing is you know, oh, there's been a lot of ideas, there's been a lot of experimentation, but there aren't a lot of examples of what does a full-time career in open source look like? Um, and so that's something that I'm super passionate about um, and something that I really, you know, have wanted to work on in all my time at GitHub um, and I'm finally getting to. So that's a short bit about me and I can go for ages on the other stuff. That was perfect. Thank you. And <laughs> thanks for still being passionate, even though I had to repeat yourself. <laughs> All right, so for folks wondering, there's already a whole bunch of people that tuned in and are excited in the comments. For folks wondering, can you give us some more details about the GitHub Accelerator? Yeah, definitely. So the Accelerator, in a nutshell, is a 10-week program. We're going to take 20 developers and teams and really help them put together a viable path to working on their project full term. Um, so there's a ton of different mentors who are already in the pro program. Uh, you can check them out on the website, um, folks like Mike Purim or Eric Brescia, um, Vishal, et cetera. And so they're all really going to help mentor this group. And, you know, I think the thing that we've heard a lot from maintainers as they've tried to think about, well, what happens if I like quit my job and go work for the internet? It's sort of like, well, it's a little scary. Like what happens next? Who am I getting funding from? How do I set up my project with the right licensing, with the right infrastructure? Where are the supports as far as like, how to work with enterprises who are using my project? How do I work with the contributions um, that come in? How do I manage my community? All of these types of questions are, um, you know, really top of mind for maintainers. And there isn't like a really great way to go about doing that. Um, so the accelerator, you know, each week we're going to bring in um, speakers and industry mentors who are going to talk about these central issues. And then over the course of the 10 weeks, what we're really looking for is how do you ensure, how do you kind of build a set of sponsors um, that can enable you to truly quit your job? You know, we're not asking folks to do it right before they, they join. We're asking folks to build with us and figure out like, hey, what's the plan? How do I get there first? Um, and so one of the things that GitHub is going to be doing on top of sort of the mentorship, as well as the sessions and things like that, is introducing folks to their, you know, either the enterprise customers or other folks who can help um, support their project and their, their sort of career in it long term. Awesome. That was a great I'm overview. Watching the spool of comments on the right. I know. <laughs> Forgive my life. 
<laughs> like while you're talking, forth. I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone's so excited. <laughs> yeah. So hey, everyone, I see the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so excited, especially that it's that I'm seeing so many people from all over the world. Like people are saying hi from Argentina or hi from South Korea. I guess this is a good time to highlight: is this open to anyone globally? Can anyone apply? Yeah, definitely. So um, the answer is yes, with an asterisk. <laughs> and the asterisk is GitHub um, obviously is going to be giving a $20,000 stipend to all the developers or teams that are participating. Um, and so the sort of legal compliance financial component of this is that, you know, GitHub sponsors is already in 68 countries across the world. And so for the folks who apply, we would want to make sure that you have an entity in one of these countries. Um, and so we can actually, you know, get you paid, which is part of the program, um, but also, you know, be able to participate fully. Um, so that's, that's sort of the only thing that I would asterisk the yes with. And it'll be fully remote and we'll try to make sure, you know, we're going to make sure that the time zones and things like that align. Perfect. Love that. And yeah, so if people are wondering, check the list of GitHub sponsors, eligible countries, but it's like 68. So <laughs> um, should be covered. Most yeah. people at least. Um, tell us about what the day to day will look like, what the time commitment will look like. What can people expect when they join this program? Yeah, so I've been sort of talking about this as like, there's the synchronous time. So all the time, you know, where you're with folks from the program. Um, and that's really, you know, about two hours a week, you're going to do a mentorship session. And then there's going to be a speaker who's going to be talking about a specific category, whether that's licensing or setting up an entity, how to work with contributors, et cetera, the things that I listed off before, or maybe I listed it off during the Twitter space, I'm forgetting now. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's sort of that component of it. And then outside of that, the real intent of the program is you already have the software. Like if that's running, you've got great users, you've got a community, you know where you want to go. But the thing that's hard is the funding. Like how do I actually get either a commercial product that is, um, you know, taking some benefit of the open source project and, and really tailoring it to something that people can pay for so that you yourself can get paid? Or is it you getting sponsors from the enterprise customers that sit on GitHub or from some of the other, you know, either foundations or other individuals that kind of work in the space? Um, and so outside of the two hour synchronous time, we really expect you to be working on your project in some way, you know, about five hours a week is what I've been saying. Um, and then I also have been saying that I also know like maintainership of projects is not easy. And so I'm sure there's going to be other time outside of that. Um, I will note like one of the big intents behind the accelerators, we want you to quit your job and like actually work on this. But we know that that's not possible for everyone. You know, a lot of people in the US, they're like, great, I have a paycheck, though. And I have health insurance and all these other things. Like I can't just like leave that by the wayside. Um, so what we are asking is that you do dedicate that amount of time, whether, you know, you're telling your job, you're taking a sabbatical, you, you're doing something to really ring fence that time, like make sure you can do it. Um, but at the same time, not completely having someone, you know, forsake all things and then um, not have like a very clear path forward. So that makes a lot of sense. I seen a question from someone on YouTube who has their name as Flame Potatoes. <laughs> they said, I had an open source library or I have a couple open source libraries on NPM, but it only has about 20 to 30 downloads a week. Can I apply? I think that's a, a good way for us to transition into like how, like what is the ideal candidate? How can people make their application stand out? Yeah, I mean, I would say to, to flame potatoes, um, you should definitely still apply. I, I will say like, if you apply this class and you don't make this class, it's not like you can never apply ever again. So like, you know, you can always, we'll always be coming back um, to, you know, previous applications and things like that. I think the thing we really think about is, do you have a really healthy, viable community, um, either in people who, you know, depend on your project or contribute to your project or do other things, 20 to 30 downloads on NPM, I don't know, like, we, we would have to, like, kind of look at it, maybe, you know, some of them are just power users, I'm not sure, but that's sort of what we're looking at. And then more importantly, is like you as the maintainer or as the contributor have a real clear view of like, hey, this is where I'm trying to get to. Like I'm trying to build an open source company or I'm trying to, you know, I have 
this set of users. And I think this would really work in, you know, the Python community or, or whatever it is, JavaScript community. And they, you know, could possibly find me. Like, this is the type of conversation that we want to have um, with maintainers. And then from there, then, you know, that's kind of going to build our, our first class. Um, but I said this before, you know, our version of success in the accelerator could take so many different flavors. Because um, right now, open source is really quite diverse in what people do. You know, you can either out of the accelerator, get found and hired by a company to work on your project full time. Like to us, that's success. It's like you're working on open source, you are able to, you know, have a life and not do this on nights and weekends, not do this on the side. So that's a great outcome for us. But another great outcome could be that, you know, you found a company and you're actually, you know, going to go raise VC funds and you have an enterprise product that's going to be associated with this project and you kind of grow together. Um, another version um, could be, this was an example that I used earlier is, you know, Mike Perham, who is one of the advisors to the GitHub Accelerator, he's a, sort of built a lifestyle business around his open source project. He doesn't have other employees. He, you know, is really sole focused as the maintainer for Sidekick, but has built an amazing business. And, you know, that's something that we want to see a lot more of as well. So there are lots of different variations. So that's why I, I bring this up because I said, you know, I really want to see like an open source project that already has um, you know, clear success and sort of is getting off the ground has gotten off the ground, but also a clear vision as to this is where I'm trying to go and like GitHub, like I need the help in these ways. Oh, um, so circus and code. I see this. Should I should I answer this one? Yeah, I and this this is my friend by the way. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so circus and code. I mean. The, the only thing that I would caution is we are sort of looking for projects that are already off the ground. And that there, there's a big reason behind that. The, the reason is that like 10 weeks is such a short period of time, especially if you're like building something and launching it and getting users and working through the first set of issues and all of that. That's an enormous amount of work. And so it would be hard for someone to sort of balance like, hey, I just launched this thing. I have no idea what users are going to be. Um, and I'm also in this accelerator. I'm trying to get funding and things like that. Like that's going to be really, really hard to balance. So I would say, you know, um, that's where we should have a conversation about whether or not you you launch it. And then like the next class is going to be really important or um, instrumental for the next level for you. Um, the other thing that I would say is like, we have a lot of awesome community support through the DevRel team at GitHub. And so Rizal, I'm sure you have lots of things that you can talk to um, Circus and Code with as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy to chat with you. Uh, DM me and I can I can help you out a bit more. There's um some other comments that came in. I know, again, people are asking, like, what kind of projects are you looking for? And there's something you said in the Twitter space that I thought, like, would help with, with some clarity for people. Um, I know you like and this is kind of repeating what you said just now, but like you did say you were looking for some maturity has some some users already and I'm looking at like the notes that I wrote um if you're wondering where I'm looking and then again you said a vision of the milestones that you want to hit with the GitHub accelerator and then a passion for learning in public it's not necessarily about like are you working on an iOS project or an Android project or a web project it's just like if you're able to hit a couple couple of those things and then Eddie had a good question on like do you have any like repo links that would be a good example uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna link the examples like the sidekick that I just used. Um, you know, Kailash, the, a couple of our advisors in the program actually have like great examples. So why don't I I will like link back there. The thing that I want to caution with the examples is these are not the examples of like someone who should apply today because <laughs> like we're not trying to be like you you know this is someone who's already in the program who like is an example. Um, but really like. This is a person where if we had met them at this point in time, they would be a great example of what could happen next. Um, yeah, like I, I think, um, you know, Caleb Porzio is another one that I use where he straight up quit his job and uh, said the milestone that I'm trying to hit is like, can I actually supplement my entire developer salary that I was getting before um, mm -hmm. through GitHub sponsors and the projects that I maintain on GitHub? And he was able to do that. Um, Another great example is like um, Nick DeJesus, who was part of, uh, yeah, who's part of GitHub Sponsors. And 
you know, really figured out a way to build an open source, um, but also get funding and support from Stripe, which was, you know, sort of the, the way that he was able to navigate working in open source full time. I have a bit of a lag. So tell me if I'm, uh, if my internet is off, but. Oh, no, streaming always has lag. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I just saw I was, my hand smear across the screen. So. <laughs> you were fine. Streaming always has lag. Um, okay. So I just linked um, Sidekick and then also use Shopping Cart. If you don't mind, since we have like a little bit of time, I'm going to, I didn't test if like the sharing screen works for you. So I'm just going to share my screen and like just scroll through um, what use Shopping Cart looks like really quickly for people uh let me pull that up just so they can have an example of like this is maybe a a starting point that that y'all would be interested in yeah let's see another i mean yeah keep going oh no um there there are so many folks who you know come to mind like another great example is like Evan Yu with Vue.js, like he's really trailblazed a path that, uh, you know, he was the maintainer of a project and he wanted it to grow outside of him and so like how do, how do you go about doing that um so, you know, again, like these are projects that have different levels of maturity, but like at that one point in time, like would they have been a great um, jumping off point for the accelerator? Perfect. Perfect. I hope that helps to give you all a bit of cl clarity. Um, and sorry, I can't drop them in the comments. We like block links in our comments. Um, I wanted to know. OK, let's see. There's some more questions here. Um. How is having a mature project but a large existing user base valued relative to this? So, um, yeah, I'll go in order, actually. So, Matthew Thompson, you just asked, you know, like, where, okay. when the next 10-week cycle is. So, um, the first class is going to start in March and then go through May. So, yeah, you know, if you're already on your way, um, but you haven't, like, quite hit this, like, moment where you feel like you have a, a pretty mature, like, um, running user base, that's okay because you know you still got like three, like two and a half months until that time, um, and then this kind of dovetails with um, Goose Gothers' uh, question, which is, you know, how is having a mature project with a large existing versus um, the potential to disrupt existing tech looking to transition to marketing? I think that's a totally fine and fair place for you to start as well, um, where you're sort of saying like, hey, I'm going to launch this thing now. But here's what I'm doing. This is the the way I'm approaching it. And I'm really thinking about marketing. Like, I think that's, that's totally fine. And you should absolutely apply. Um, yes. And then for stupid learner. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to cut your job necessarily. I, I think the thing that we're balancing here is, you know, it's, it's 10 weeks. If you are able to fence off this time and say, hey, like, I'm actually going to be able to dedicate time to my project and really do this right, um, then you're absolutely a fine candidate, especially if you've got like other considerations where, you know, quitting your job all of a sudden, like suspends your benefits or your health care or whatever it is. Like, that's kind of the reason why we've given um, quite a bit of latitude and what you can and cannot do. Um, yeah. And then Gina, you know, you might not be ready yet, but uh, again, like we want to do a class uh, once, if not twice a year. So uh, please like just keep us in your mind um, as we go. Yeah. And for a stupid learner and anybody else, I know that you talked about the time commitment earlier in the Twitter space. And I think you said it was like two hours a week. Correct me if I'm wrong, that you'll you'll be like having like synchronous meetings and then you're hoping that they work at least five hours um, a week on their projects separately. So if, if you're able to maintain a full-time job and be able to do that, or if you are able to like take a sabbatical or something and be able to do that, like think about your, also think about like your mental health. Cause I've done multiple jobs at once and it's been stressful. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, ultimately, as we think about it, especially as the first class gets passed, um, our idea is that you should, you know, you, we want you to quit your job and like really, really give this um, the full force of your energy. Um, but we also understand that like this is the first time around. And so, you know, people really want to see like how does this work um, and have a couple of examples. So this is part of our like we need to experiment with the community. We can't just like tell them what to do. So um, that's a big part of it. Um, for Alex, um, 
I don't know the, I don't know the repo. I don't know the exact thing. Um, you know, this is really about like, if you were going to build a business or if you were going to build a set of funding around your project, um, that would be a great candidate for the accelerator. Um, but yeah, uh, why don't you, you email me nathory at github.com and, and we can go from there. And then for Muhammad, yes, there is selection criteria. You can just go to the FAC on the website, which Rizal has up right now. Mm hmm. I'm trying to find it. But yeah, go, you can go on here. I was going to give them a, a little view of the, the application and what it looks like. Um, but let's finish off with some of these questions. I think there's one more from Circus and Code. Yeah, um, my, my short answer to this is yes. So, um, you know, I think there are a lot of folks who are out there who are in between um, projects, jobs, etc. like where this could be a very viable option. So uh, my short answer is yes, apply. And then you know, the, the important thing is that you have like something that you are focused on and there's kind of a centered idea launch thing that is going to be created. Cool. And, um, Con oh, there's a lot Connor, of, this is new. This is brand yeah, speaking is new. new. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Yes. Cool. And I, I will, there's a lot of questions. I try to read the, the question out just in case people like can't see the question or whatever. Um, how about projects tailored towards the scientific community? I, I, for me, what I'm getting from you, what your answers are, is that it doesn't really matter like the topic as much as like are they passionate? Do they have a growing user base? And are do they see a vision that they can move forward with with yeah. the accelerator? And I, I think it kind of follows the same vein as open source, which is like we have so much variation in the open source community. You know, you see JavaScript developers, you see scientific developers, you see people, you know, running LLMs, large data books, all sorts of things. Um, the main focus is like, okay, you know, I've been doing this in open source, it's been on the side, but I really want to make this my full time gig. Like, what is the tool or package or library that I'm creating that is helping a set of users or a set of companies do this? And you know, part of what's happening here is, you know, a lot of people put out open source projects and it's like, it's sort of like a, a small thing that helps them, scratches their itch, does, you know, a very specific set of tasks. And then there's some people who are working open source who launch that and then it becomes kind of the backbone to a lot of other companies work. And our view is that like those companies are using this in their production software, they should be giving back to you. And so how does GitHub help those companies decide, hey, like I should really be sponsoring this project full time. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I wanted to just so people can know, like, go ahead and go to the accelerator.github.com. But I wanted to just show you all the landing page. And then um, you can tell me if there's anything that I should like point out in particular. But um, like she mentioned, there is an FAQ. Some of the questions y'all are asking, if you forget them, you can always go back here and figure out like what types of people can apply. This is the, the selection criteria. Um, you can always figure out like, what would you do if you were selected, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but is there anything on the, the application specifically that we should point out to folks? Um, no, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I've got. Um, okay. I will say like, don't be worried about the video. It's really just us wanting to get to know and meet you. And um, a lot of people have done like really quick, you know, iPhone just uploaded it. Uh, so really don't, don't do, uh, don't, get too uh, nervous about that. That's the only thing I would say. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't even notice that part. So cool. It looks like there's like a, and I don't know if I'm zoomed in enough for y'all. looks like there's a general question section. There's like a one minute video of you introducing yourself so they can get to know you. Um, some other questions about your project and if you have any contributors. Oh, that's something else that we talked about on the Twitter space where you could join in with a team, but you all are limiting it to three because you're trying to or 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 um thinking about it being three group members or less because you're trying to make sure that the the money is dispersed in a in a fair way right yeah that and then also you know we wanted to keep the group small in the first class because part of this is you want to meet the folks who are doing this with you mm -hmm. um and you know if everyone has five people then all of a sudden you know it's not a group of 20 it's a group of whatever and so uh, you know, we really wanted to make sure that uh, it felt close enough that you you felt that you had a class that was um, going with you. Okay, great. 
Um, cool, cool. And I think you froze for me. Oh no, you're moving. Awesome. Uh, my one of my last questions to you because we did reach seven o'clock, and I just realized. Mm -hmm. Um is like what do you envision for the future of this program like what is like your ultimate hope of like after this program's over and like we do a f like an one next year or in the future what, what are you hoping that looks like well i'll give you the big big vision which yeah. is you know i think in our last github conference we sort of said there are 94 million people million developers on github today and that's just an astonishing number, which is, you know, like we added more developers onto the platform in one year than the very first year of all the developers that we thought would be on GitHub in 2012. Like there was 12 million in 2012. And now we just added that amount in the last year. And my view is that this is a program of 20 developers, but really we want, you know, 200,000. We want a million, we want 2 million developers to be building businesses that sustain them and their lifestyle as long term um, in open source. And, you know, I think there, there are two things running behind that. It's that open source is clearly one. It's the better way to work. And so instead of folks working on it on the side, working on it um, because they're trying to get recognized and then having to abandon the project because now they have a full time job. What we want is people actually just working on open source, um, which I think, you know, makes it a stronger community makes our software overall as, you know, like a global. Oh, no. <laughs> she just hopped out. <laughs> Let me message her. Uh, we lost you. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but if people have more questions and they want to type it in the chat, um, feel free to, to type it in and I'll try to I'll try to answer it for y'all. Um, someone said, does GitHub also help projects to get a bigger user base community in the first place? I think that's the hardest part. You know what? Um, we do little things here and there. Like, um, it might not be direct help as in like this program, but sometimes I'll do talks and I'll write blog posts about like how to better market your, your project so that you can gain more contributors. Um, so let me drop this. While she's coming back in, let me drop this blog post in that I have about like how to market your project. So if y'all are not there yet where you're like, I want to get to the point where I have more contributors and I can apply to this program, there is a blog post I wrote called Attract Contributors to Your Open Source Project with Authenticity. I know developers are often like feeling icky about um, marketing their projects, but there is a way that you can do it like authentically you can speak at conferences about it you can blog about like your different learnings like you can be like oh I had a challenge today where I was trying to work with like promises in javascript or I was trying to encrypt like some data and it wasn't working out but here's how I learned to solve it and like by doing those kinds of things you help other people get really engaged and um, invested in your project because they feel like they've been on that journey with you um, other ways are like tweeting about it, right? Like tweet about your wins and successes, to stream about it. Like that's like the whole thing about open source. It's working and learning in public. So even when you don't know what you're doing, like people get invested in you. Um, let me see if there's any update from her. Uh, okay, she's restarting the stream. Okay, and she said she'll just close. I'll just close for her. Um, but yeah, and then participate in Hacktoberfest as well. That's a good thing. I will, I'll put this as a link on, on here. Or you can DM me at Black Girl Bites on most social media if you have questions. Um, yeah, open source is great for con content creation. But it looks like, <laughs> looks like Natri is not, Natri is not coming back um, because she has a whole bunch of like, restarting to do and it might take us a, a bit longer than we expected um but there is more resources coming out with the github accelerator go ahead and apply on accelerator.github.com i wish y'all the best and if you don't get in it's completely fine like next year or whenever the next cycle is you have that opportunity and i'm almost certain that more companies will start to follow suit with this i'm hoping that github is kind of like like creating a, a ripple effect of other companies being like you know what i want to fund this 
um, project as well, or I want to give back. So thanks y'all so much for tuning in. Um, actually, someone just said something. How long will the GitHub Accelerator program last? It's going to last 10 weeks. What is the scheduled plan of this program? What is the time and volume of each session? So from what I got from her is that it's 10 weeks. They will, they want you all to meet synchronously um, for two hours a week on Zoom where you're learning stuff from them, but they haven't set the time yet because this is still an experiment. And because this is global, we don't know like where, which time zones will happen. So once people get in, they'll set like what is a good time for people to meet and how long it will be. But it's a, it'll generally be a two hour Zoom session. And then they want you to, to spend five hours investing into your project and working on it. Um, but thanks y'all so much. I really appreciate you for tuning in. Um, and I'll put on this little ending stream video. Bye.